Good evening and welcome to a special event, our annual Area Churches Day, of course done via Zoom webinar. Uh, this event is usually held in person for most of the day in Walton Hall. Churches often bring many gifts and snacks and lots of information for our students. And we certainly miss that type of interaction. Tonight we'll be focusing mostly on church information for our students. We will also be recording this session and posting it up on our YouTube channel so other students who could not be here this evening can view it. Eastern University continues to be diligent, prayerful, and hopeful as we journey together through this coronavirus pandemic. Special thanks to our community, especially the students present, for committing to wear their face mask, adhering to social distancing, and, to, and practicing good hygiene, especially hand washing. And we are especially grateful to our area church representatives this evening for their time and presence. Tonight, we have invited, um, well, we had uh, 10 RSVPs of area churches that would be represented. And um, my colleague Taylor Gray will now share with you uh, the screen to show you the 10 churches that are represented. Some may be still attempting to get into the Zoom webinar, but this will be the listing of the 10 churches represented. Thank you, Taylor. They are in alphabetical order and they will be presenting momentarily. As I was looking over the list, there are a number of alumni present that are connected to these churches that I remember as students, which makes me feel really ancient right now. Of course, there are many more churches in, our, uh, in and around our university, but tonight we have a wonderful sampling. At the university's website on the Office of Faith and Practice page, we have a more extensive listing of churches. Here at Eastern University, we deeply believe in the role of the church. Simply, Jesus offered no plan B. It wasn't as if Jesus said, well, let's try the church for a couple of thousand years, and if it doesn't work out, we'll go to plan B. It was the church that Jesus established on the rock, the Apostle Peter, that is the hope for the world. So this evening, each church will present for three to four minutes, and thank you for observing these time constraints. During this time, they will talk about who they are and what opportunities might be present for college students, particularly virtually. After these brief presentations, we'll have a Q&A moderated by my colleague, Taylor Gray, who faithfully serves as the administrative assistant in the Office of Faith and Practice. Thanks, Taylor, for all your good efforts in organizing this event. Students, begin to think of, your, of the questions you might have even now. I would like to begin to, uh, with prayer, a prayer for unity written by Thomas Merton, who has been referred to as one of the most influential American Catholic authors of the 20th century. He died in 1968. His prayer is entitled, we are one in you. So let us pray together. Oh God, we are one with you. You have made us one with you. You have taught us that if we are open to one another, you dwell in us. Help us to preserve this openness and to fight for it with all our hearts. Help us to realize that there can be no understanding where there is mutual rejection. O oh God, in accepting one another wholeheartedly, fully, and completely, we accept you, and we thank you, and we adore you, and we love you with our whole being because our being is your being. Our spirit is rooted in your spirit. Fill us then with love, and let us be bound together with love as we go our diverse ways, united in this one spirit which makes you present in this world and which makes you witness to the reality that is love. Love has overcome. Love is victorious. Amen and amen. So we will go in the order that is presented here. 
So we'll begin this evening uh, with the Church of the Good Samaritan and move forward. Uh, good evening. I am. Uh, my name is Dan Garrison Edwards. I am uh, one of the two directors of college and young adult ministry at Church of the Good Samaritan in Paoli, Pennsylvania. So uh, that's if you were to hop on 30 and just drive west, you'd eventually come back, come uh, past the church. You can't miss it. Uh, uh, we are uh, committed to meet all the um, meet all the different uh, needs and situations that are presented right now uh in uh this pandemic season so uh if you are to go to our website uh you'll get the list of all of our service offerings i think the ones that are most um noteworthy to point out right now is uh, we have two streaming services uh that kick off this sunday a 10 a.m streaming service that is a um, blend of uh, contemporary and traditional worship as well as uh a 4 a.m evening or sorry 4 p.m evening service uh, that will also be streamed uh, as and we'll have a Wednesday night uh, Vesper service that'll meet twice a week or sorry twice a month uh, on the first and third to uh, uh, follow the um, to stay on top of everything that's happening with uh, our college ministry I invite you to check uh, to follow Good Samaritan College Ministry on Instagram uh, and you can always DM us through there with questions um, we'll also keep you up to date with uh, uh, different uh, virtual scavenger hunts and care package programs that we are uh, will be setting up in the coming weeks. Um, I myself am a, uh, an alumni from uh, Eastern University. I graduated in 2011. I was part of the uh, student chaplains program while I was there and um, it's a community that uh, I love that um, many people at Church of Good Samaritan love. Um, so please reach out uh, through the Instagram uh, our emails are also on the website, and uh, we look forward to chatting with you. Thank you very much. Um, next, we have Frasia Mennonite Church. Hi, everybody. I'm Amy Yoder McLaughlin, the pastor at Fraser Mennonite Church and an Eastern University alum from the class of 94. When I was a student at Eastern, um, I was looking for a different church than what I was able to walk to around campus. And so some friends and I hopped in our car and drove out to Fraser Mennonite. And uh, we were struck by the congregation's desire to uh, follow in the way of Jesus, uh, their excellent singing, and just how gracious and kind they were to us Eastern students. They wanted to know our name, and we weren't just the pile of kids that ended up in the fifth row back. Uh, we all had a name. Uh, they invited us to, our, to their homes for meals. They made sure we knew when potlucks were, um, and it was a really special place. So uh, it's kind of amazing to be there now as the pastor. Uh, all those things are still true about Fraser. Uh, when Eastern students come, we love to have you. We want to know who you are, and uh, we want to fold you into the life of the church. Some of the other things I love about Fraser is that this congregation is committed to uh, the way of nonviolence, believing that that's uh, who Jesus was in his life and teaching. We're committed to uh, social justice and ecology. We have a beautiful garden on our property where folks can um, grow their own food. And we also devote a large portion of that garden to feeding folks in our community. And we distribute that every week. Uh, we love to sing everything from four-part harmony to modern worship music, uh, and there is a lot of intergenerational fun and caring that goes on here. Uh, we are not worshiping in person. Uh, this Sunday, I begin Sunday 27 on Zoom, uh, which has been very strange and also kind of uh, a time of real creativity and fun for our congregation. 
So um, I invite you to join us. Uh, if you're interested in joining us, you can send me an email, amy at frasermennonite.org. Uh, F-R-A-Z-E-R is how you spell that. Um, and I'm happy to share the Zoom link with you. You can do it from the comfort of your dorm room. Half of our congregation is in our pajamas. So uh, if you're there in your pajamas with bedhead, you will be just like everyone else except for me. So uh, I hope to see some of you there, uh, 9.30 on Sunday mornings, uh, and I look forward to your emails. Thanks. Thank you, Amy. Um, thank you. It's wonderful to have Dan and Amy as graduates of Eastern University, different, different years, and they're now serving in the local church. So this is wonderful, wonderful. Um, let's go now. I believe we have a representative from Grace Covenant Church. I, um, I'm actually going to share my screen. Is that okay? I believe that should be okay. Yes. Okay. And everyone can see the screen. Okay. Um, just to introduce myself, I'm actually a sophomore here at Eastern, um, but I've been going to this church for a year now and I just became a leader this year. Um, yeah, um, just to introduce our church, it's called Grace Covenant Church and our mission is raising up kingdom workers who are transformed by Christ to influence the world. Um, we actually have two sites um, for our church. One is called Mainline and that includes um, the surrounding colleges like Villanova, Eastern, Bryn Mawr, and Haverford, and which is located in the Agnes Irwin School and the University City site um, consists of Temple, Penn, and Drexel. And they have their services in the UPenn um, campus in Myerson Hall. So Eastern students will be going to the mainline um, campus or site. Um, there's a lot of ways to get involved with um, our church. We have family group, which is basically um, a Bible study and a time of fellowship, but also reading the gospel and um, interacting with the Lord and with your fellow um, peers. And Eastern has a weekly family group at Mondays, 7.30 p.m. We also have a thing called Friday Night Live, which is actually starting this week at 7.30 um, via Zoom. And it's basically a time of worship with uh, um, all, like the, uh, all the college campuses. And we either have a guest speaker or um, we hear our pastor talk about a, um, a short little message. Um, this is our um, link to our Sunday service at 10.30 a.m. Um, right now, we have an in-person service, but we are limiting it to 25 people um, in the Philly area. And we also have a Zoom link, which everyone can join in. Um, thank you for listening. If anyone is interested, please contact Emily Han or Lois Han, which is me. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you, thank you so much. And this is a wonderful example of how students can be involved while being a student at Eastern University in, the, in a local church. So thank you for that. Very, very well done. One thing too that I did not mention in my welcoming comments is that hopefully this is also mutually beneficial to the churches to know what's going on in, in their area, perhaps, and you're learning from each other too. Um, the next church that's listed is LCBC, uh, Lives Changed by Christ. Um, if you're here, I believe you are, please, we'd like to hear from you. Great. Hey, guys, my name is Jeremy, and I'm from LCBC Church. And I'll just say off the bat here, since I'm doing this from my home, I apologize if you hear my toddler in the background making any noise. But uh, <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, LCBC stands for Lives Changed by Christ, and that's who we say we are as a church, is we're just a bunch of people having our lives changed by Jesus. And so our mission statement is to introduce people to Jesus and together fully follow him. And so everything we do as a church 
is through the filter of how do we introduce more people to Jesus? How do we uh, introduce people to that amazing love that's revealed in Jesus Christ? And so uh, we are super passionate about chasing after this mission and helping people take a next step in their faith. And so everything from the, the type of music that we, you know, play in our worship on Sunday mornings to, um, to the way we dress a church and everything that we do is with people in mind who may not even know Jesus yet. And so um, a few ways that we want to help people connect and grow. And so we ask everybody at our church to gather, connect, serve, and get out. And so in this uh, season right now, the way we gather um, on weekends, we are doing in-person gatherings. Uh, we're up in Harleysville, Pennsylvania. And so we do have three services, two on Sunday morning, one on Monday evening. Um, obviously, they are COVID friendly with masks and social distancing. We have a very large auditorium that's uh, at a very small capacity for those who are comfortable attending in person. Um, but we also have um, 15 different times that we uh, stream live um, on Saturday evenings, basically all day Sunday, as well as uh, Monday evening. And so you can always check out LCBC online. Um, if you just go to lcbcchurch.com, you can check out when all those times are, but we'd love to have you join us for a gathering. We also want every single person at our church to be connecting in meaningful relationships. And so for young adults, for college students, um, our main win is for groups. We want people in small circles where they can grow in their relationship with Jesus. And so we've got a, a ministry called College Age Connect, which in a normal world, we'll be meeting at our church in a lot of the season. But um, in this time, um, a lot of our small groups of college students are either meeting in homes or uh, there's going to be a group meeting online as well. And so uh, they're actually going to be starting and talking about a series that we're doing as a church beginning the first week of October. And the, the series is called Uncommon Ground. And uh, as the name suggests, um, there's maybe a sense right now that there's a lot of uh, not common ground between people, that there's a lot of divisiveness, a lot of contentious issues, well, maybe it's politics or race or social justice issues. And really our call as Christians is how do we love our neighbors even when we share nothing in common? And so we've got small groups of young adults that are gonna be going through that content this fall starting in October. Um, like I said, we've got three groups that are going to be meeting in homes, some of them throughout the region that would be accessible um, in small groups. But then we also have a, a Zoom group on Thursday evenings that young adults can be a part of starting that first week of October. And so we would love young adults to, to attend one of our main gatherings, connect in groups like that. And we also have a ton of serving opportunities at our church too. Um, some of them virtual, some of them, uh, again, in person, but our church is passionate about making, uh, making a difference in the lives of others. And so we oftentimes hold uh, community drives, food drives to benefit local organizations. We're passionate about seeing the gospel make a difference in our communities. And so there's lots of opportunities to serve at LCBC as a young adult as well. And the final thing that I'll, I'll mention is that we also have a, uh, we've been doing outdoor worship nights for those who are more comfortable being outdoors with others. So we set up in our parking lot. You can be as distant as you choose for people, uh, from people. Uh, but we even just this past uh, Sunday evening, we did that outside and we baptized 10 people as well. And so uh, we've been really enjoying those. They happen the first and third Thursday of every month. So actually coming up on September 17th, uh, so third Thursday, uh, we're going to do an outdoor worship night and there's going to be a bonfire for young adults as well after that. So uh, whether you're comfortable in person for any of those or whether you want to visit us online, we would love to have you engage some way at LCBC. Thank you very much, Jeremy. We much, we much appreciate that overview. Um, our next church is Memorial Church of God. And I know they have a few representatives this evening in the Zoom meeting. So please, uh, we welcome your presence. Hello, everyone. Um, I would like to share my screen as well. Is that okay? Yes, please do. All right. Um, could everyone see everything? All right, good. Um, my name is Jeremy Thomas. I am a member of the uh, Memorial Church of God in Christ, and we are known as the Gathering Place. Uh, we are located right here in your community at 747 Buckley in Haverford, PA, 19041. And we are led by our pastor, 
Reverend Dr. Darren K. Miller and our First Lady, Evangelist Tasha Miller. I just wanted to take a few moments and give you a quick preview of the beliefs we practice, give you some information as to how you can reach out to us and the services we provide right here in your community. So let's dive on in. Uh, first, we have our statement of faith. We believe in the Bible, as well as the Trinity. We believe that there is only one God eternally existing in three persons, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We also believe that Christ is coming soon, and we as his people are to prepare for him through repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. We also believe in sanctification. While we read and learn about the teachings from scripture, we are led to live a holy life, separated and pleasing unto God. For a full description of our statement of faith, please visit our website at memorial.kojic.com. Uh, moving right into our schedule of services, we are on Facebook and YouTube every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. We begin with our Sunday school, where we dive into the Word of God and try to apply it to our everyday life. This is then followed by our morning worship at 10.05 a.m. Uh, we have a very talented group of people that come together to do God's work and deliver a service with a message specifically for you. So be sure to tune in every Sunday. If you happen to miss the live service, you could also catch it on Facebook and YouTube. We are also live and online every Tuesday for our prayer and Bible study. Prayer is done via Zoom and it starts at 7 p.m. and it runs until about 7.25 p.m. It is swiftly followed by our Bible study at 7.30 p.m. This is where we take some time to dissect the word of God and answer any questions you may have. Our Bible study is also streamed live on Facebook and YouTube. Your questions are recorded and answered live. So don't miss the opportunity to interact with us as we get into God's word. We also have a young adult ministry and our, our theme sorry, is further from each other yet closer to God. So while we practice social distancing, we use the opportunity to get closer to God and our theme comes from Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. The scheduled events are to begin on October 17th, and the schedules will be online and available soon. Please contact uh, Jabri Harris. He is an Eastern University student, and he could give you the detailed schedule. The last thing I want to mention is that we have a free food pantry. It is open on Wednesday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., and on Friday from 12 p.m. to 6 p.m., if you are unable to make it, you can call or email us at the number listed and we will ensure that we could get something together for you. You can also contact us via email at memorialypww at gmail.com to request more information. Our pantry receives everything from essentials to non-essentials and it's given at no cost to you. And this is just our information page. We are on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and we have our church website where you could reach out to us for more information. God bless you and everyone be safe. Well, thank you very much. That, uh, all this information is helpful. I know it might be a lot to digest uh, for our students. That's why we're recording it and going to be posting it on our YouTube channel and then we'll uh, link it uh, to our website so um, students that are not able to be present this evening can come and view it later. Um, there was a late cancellation. Um, okay, and we're going to go right then to um, Proclamation Presbyterian Church uh, is with us this evening. We're grateful for that. Uh, yes, good evening. Uh, my name is Ken Wendland. I'm one of the pastors at Proclamation and I head up our college ministry. Uh, we are about 12 minutes from Eastern uh, in Bryn Mawr, Bryn Mawr PA. Uh, we have a van pickup service for those who desire a ride. Uh, we are currently meeting and we're, we are observing all uh, COVID guidelines uh, for a safe gathering. Uh, we begin uh, our Sunday at nine o'clock with Sunday school, uh, followed by a time of prayer. We believe prayer is extremely important. Uh, worship is at 10, 1030 uh, live. Uh, that is also live streamed. 
And uh, we also have a 5 p.m. evening service. It's an abbreviated service, about 35 minutes in length that is outdoors. And uh, we welcome uh, you to that as well. Uh, we know that college years are a critical season in, in your lives. It's hard to overstate the impact of this transitional period. Uh, the habits that are practiced during this season often shape our attitudes and behaviors throughout life. Uh, it's a time of challenges. Uh, we wrestle with the big questions about life. Who am I? What do I value? What do I want to pursue? Uh, we encounter people who are hostile to Christianity. Uh, many people have doubts about the Christian faith. They're challenged and stretched uh, in different ways. Uh, and sadly, it's also a time in, of life when many young adults leave the church. Um, uh, many college students uh, we found uh, follow the example of their parents while they're still living at home, but they haven't owned uh, the Christian faith as their own. Uh, some lack a role model who, uh, someone who's truly committed to participating in the local church. And uh, we believe that a vital factor that contributes to the likelihood of young people main, remaining committed to the local church is the presence in their lives of meaningful relationships within the church body. And uh, we have uh, members in our church who love college students, who love to invite them into, our, into their homes. Uh, and we think it's important that uh, college students are able to connect with uh, the larger body uh, of Christ at, at proclamation. Um, so a, a church family is, is important uh, just because it's easy to adopt the values of our culture, uh, relativism, uh, there's no absolutes, uh, hedonism, uh, there's no higher goal than my happiness and pleasure, uh, emotionalism, living by my feelings, uh, materialism, uh, things are things are what are mo most important to me, uh, and autonomy, uh, no sense of accountability uh, to God for my choices. And so uh, we think the church's calling is to help student, students uh, settle into a faithful Bible-believing church uh, where there is genuine caring uh, for students. Uh, we will often have a college Sunday school class uh, past classes include things like grounded in grace, growing in wisdom, uh, what's on your mind, uh, responding to stress and anxiety. And we welcome those who uh, are skeptics, who have doubts and have questions uh, about the Christian life. Uh, we have a website, uh, proclamation.org. We would love for you to check it out. Uh, and if you would like to contact me with any questions, uh, my email address is ken at proclamation.org. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ken and Proclamation Presbyterian Church. Thank you. Um, our next church will be St. Luke Lutheran Church in Devon. Welcome. Good evening and thank you. So St. Luke Lutheran is in Devon as was already mentioned, and is part of the Evangelical Lutheran Church of America, or the ELCA. At St. Luke, every person's identity is recognized and celebrated as a gift from God, no exceptions. So all are welcome. Children and students are celebrated and are considered invaluable members of our community. Now St. Luke is only four miles from campus, and when things are a little more normal, we will and have in the past provided rides for students who need one. St. Luke has been the church home of Eastern faculty and staff members, and especially in the past five years, a growing number of students. This began a few years ago when one student met St. Luke during the Area Churches Day. His home church was Lutheran and he made a point to visit. He quickly found ways to get involved, including music, and youth ministry. He now describes St. Luke as a lively and welcoming church where he felt like he was always included and never lost in the crowd. He began inviting other students to events and to worship services, and it became common to see groups of friends coming from campus together to be a part of the St. Luke community. 
Ian has graduated, but now lives in the local community and teaches at Radnor Middle School. He loves Eastern, still has many friends on campus, and remains active at St. Luke. He would be very happy to share his own story with you, but unfortunately could not make it this evening, and come with you to a St. Luke service or event. Um, as I touched on briefly, um, there are many ways for students to get involved at St. Luke. We have prayer meetings weekly on Tuesday evening, and there are virtual Bible studies as well. Other things that um, students have participated in in the past is we do have a student band. If you're musically inclined, they can always use help, as well as um, attending as a uh, chaperone for the National Youth Gathering. There is another one. It's every three or four years coming up in 2021. Um, the student I referred to had actually gone to the last one when my children went and they had a, a marvelous time with him. So in any event, we are not meeting in person yet, um, but in one sense, it makes it easier to get a glimpse of what Lit St. Luke is about as we continue worshiping online. You can visit us online at stlukedevon.org and Saint is spelled out, or find us on YouTube or Facebook to participate in or simply browse a live stream worship service every Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. So thank you for your time. Hope to see you soon. Thank you, St. Luke Lutheran Church. Thank you for your presence this evening. Um, I believe there is no one uh, here for 6-8 Vineyard Church. They may have uh, probably was a last minute cancellation. So we'll move right to uh, Victory Church and hear from them. Hi, is it all right if I share my screen as well? Uh, most certainly, yes, please do. All right. So my name is Amanda Roque and I am one of the pastors on staff with Victory Church. And if I had to give you like two descriptors of Victory Church um, that you would notice um, if you kind of walked in the door, it would be we are incredibly multi-ethnic and we are also very um, age diverse. And so this is a multi-generational, multi-ethnic church. And I think that is really special because I think that is, um, you know, what's going to be in heaven, what it's going to be like in heaven. And so um, we uh, value experiencing God. And so every week um, we seek to experience God. We also seek to be the church. And what do we mean by be the church? Like, actually do the stuff in the Bible. Um, and one of the main ways that we do that is through our life groups or small groups. Um, we also want to impact our worlds. And the key there is our worlds, meaning my world is different than your world. Um, and your world is the area or the group of people that God has given you influence with. And so um, one of the primary ways that we try to impact our world is through something we call the big days of service where three or four times a year we mobilize the entire church to serve um, the poor and so this can be in Norristown, Philadelphia, Chester but there's kind of a little bit something special about the way we do it. We encourage everyone who calls Victory Home that's serving to actually bring somebody along with them who does not yet know Jesus. And the idea behind that is that um, some people are just not ready to say yes to coming to a worship service. Um, maybe not even saying yes to coming to a small group, but they are willing to come and serve. Um, and God created us to be generous people. So of course that we would um, kind of tap into that character of God through serving. And so we shine our light before all men so that they can see our good works and they can too glorify the Lord. 
And so we um, encourage people to serve with us, get to know us, check us out, make sure we're not weird. And then we find that people are very likely to say yes to coming to worship with us. And lastly, we believe in empowering each other. And um, it's not just the paid people who do the ministry, um, but all of us together do the ministry. Um, and so we find it uh, really important to be empowering and encouraging each other. And so the ways that you can engage with Victory right now, um, we do have online services running all day on Sunday, and you can see these here on the website. And outside, uh, but we also have an outside service, which I equate to like an outdoor concert, which I'm really enjoying because when I was a teenager, I was all about Creation Fest. And so I like having everything outside. Um, and so we do that at 10 a.m. and people kind of engage on their comfort level, um, whether that be sitting in your car or, you know, coming to sit on a blanket or sit out in the chairs to worship with us. And so that's at 10 a.m. on Sundays. And I'm just going to scan down here and click a button. The way that I see college students um, really enjoying uh, and en engaging with our churches through our life groups. We have over 50 life groups starting next week. And there are ones that are specific for college students, um, but there are, it's an open market system. And so there are other groups. If there's any groups that pop out to you, they're all on Zoom and um, you can engage in any of them. And so um, those are a few of the ways that I think you could um, join or kind of get involved and um, see what's next with you. And we um, actually have a few East, uh, Eastern alums on staff, as well as an Eastern professor on staff with us. So we love Eastern students and we are glad to welcome more. Well, thank you, Victory Church. Much appreciate that. This has been uh, wonderfully helpful to our students and for our community. Uh, before we would go into any Q&A, and we may, may have a couple of questions or so, and we'll be wrapping up, I do wanna just highlight um, something um, about where we are as a university community. We are strongly recommending that students remain as much on campus as possible as we're in week three of, uh, of a pandemic, as we all know, and we're trying to maintain what is called an envelope community where we're trying to provide services for our students where they're at rather than asking them to leave the community except for emergency situations. So uh, all that to say is that I'm gonna be encouraging students to do as much virtually with regards to worship service, Bible study, small groups at this time. This is not to suggest that if your church has an in-person service is that we're opposed to it. It's just that we're trying to keep 800 plus students uh, uh, COVID free and being, making sure that they can navigate well traveling back and forth. So uh, I'm just grateful that all of the churches seem to have some type of online virtual component and that is wonderful. And we appreciate that very, very much. I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Taylor Gray. If there's any questions from our students, um, this would be the time to ask, or actually you'll do is you'll type it in the chat and Taylor can, Taylor can read your question. And if there are no questions, then we'll bring our session to a close. I guess we don't have any questions coming in per se. Is that right, Taylor? Okay. Um, obviously, if you are on campus in person, students would be coming to tables and having conversations and 
filling out forms and getting some goodies and snacks and other things like that. So we understand that the nature of this uh, medium is, is a little bit harder to connect. So I want to just thank our area churches that are represented this evening. Thank you for taking the time out of a very busy schedule to be with our students and to have the session recorded so that we can use it uh, for the rest of this semester. Thank you, Taylor Gray, again, for your help with organizing this event. We will continue to pray for our area churches, and please remember us in your prayers as we continue this academic journey with our students. Um, also, please email OFP, which stands for Office of Faith and Practice, OFP at eastern.edu. If you want any further information, students will email you directly with any other additional information. I will also say, please check the website of the university under the Office of Faith and pa Practice webpage. We have a listing of these churches already there, and have, it'll have a link to their websites. And so, um, thank you again to our area churches. Um, good to connect with many of you. Um, and thank you again for your ministry and for really being the hope of the world in your local community. So God bless you and keep you. And thanks again for this evening. Bye-bye for now.